This program is intended for mature audiences. Parental discretion is advised. Hey, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. We have with us once again the amazing, the incredible Nurse Brenda. Uh. Oh, I'm sorry. That's that, that was that was your role last summer. So that was that was last year. Is Nurse Brenda officially retired? We we my, my last patient, my best patient, was wow. you. Wow, that's very nice. You did a great job. Could have done it without you. You did a lot. You did a lot. So now it's a year removed. I've completely healed. You're on to new and better things. In fact, you are, I believe, in your bus right now, right? I am. I am. I am in Dreamcatcher. Is it all? As, is, it, is it all ready to go? I'm doing one more thing to it. I came back to. I've got to tweak some belts on it, and then I'll be ready to take off again. So, yeah. Does it got good power? It does. It's a really and it drives really well too. It it really drives really tight. Mm -hmm. uh, I was really surprised. It's really easy to drive. I like a I like a big van. Really is surprisingly easy. I like it. That. It is big, mm -hmm. so uh, yeah, it's 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 kind of a monster. It takes a while to get the hang of it, but she drives nice. She's she's good, good bus, good bus. And that's what you've been wanting for some time now. So I'm glad it worked out. Yes, it is. Thank you very much. You were substantially important in this coming to be. You and and Sandy both in your different ways, but yeah, without. You helped me, but I, I mean, you helped me, I helped you. And that's the way I like to make it happen. Yep. Everybody helps each other. So now your your dream catcher is a reality. Yes. I like that video that you put in your channel. In fact, I would encourage people to go to your channel and see the, the bus. You can see the outside and the inside, the great paint job. I mean, you guys did an amazing job on it. So what's next on your itinerary? Uh... I think I'm going to, I'm not quite sure, but I think it's the mountains. I think the mountains is where I've got to lead up off of. Mm -hmm. uh, I went over to the Grand Canyon on the North Rim because I was doing some, I was, um, I'm hanging out with Bigfoot. <laughs> hanging out with the clan, as we say, and doing some communication with them. Uh, because they're very close. There's, they, they peel over into the fifth dimension a lot. So uh, I've been talking to them and the magical creatures, the ones that people would know of as oh, fairies and elves and unicorns and that kind of stuff. So there had been pretty much a disconnect between what people know of as Bigfoot. I call it the clan. The clan people, there was a big pretty much a disconnect in the vibration flow between the clan and magical creatures. So I kind of introduced them again, showed them where each other was. They kind of lost each other. So I kind of said, hey, you're right here and you're right here. And they went, oh, I wondered where you were, that kind of thing. You know, not long ago, Kim was telling me she's obsessed with Bigfoot all of a sudden. And like she wanted to just go in and search for Bigfoot. She said, we need to just go and look for Bigfoot. And so you think she's picking up on something that, that you picked up on? I would imagine because they are very close now. Uh, a lot of the, um, I've got a friend who has a friend who has an experience from childhood with Bigfoot. And I didn't really know anything about the Bigfoot groups or any of that. Because you know me, I'm pretty sheltered. But I did find out vibrationally, I kind of talked to the group when I was interacting with her. And I, I'm not surprised that they don't see them because a lot of what I saw was they're afraid of them. They consider them monsters. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen the movie Harry and the Hendersons. Long time ago. But if, if you haven't, you should watch it because it, it basically says that. It says they... They run into a Bigfoot, they take it home and to nurse it back to health. And uh, the, the fear is that it's this giant monster with pointy teeth and will beat you up scary, blah, blah. 
And in reality, he was a big old teddy bear, very, very loving entity. And, and the Bigfoot are anything but, like, scary. They're not scary at all. But if you, if the groups go into them and they're searching for a being that's, that's fearful, they're, they're not going to see them. They're not going to ever see them. Uh, they they kind of stay away from humans anyway because humans are so dangerous. So that's kind of funny that, that humans can't find them because they think they're scary. And the clan stays away from humans because humans are are very dangerous beings. Sure. I mean, most, most, beings. most people would just kill Bigfoot if they saw him, right? And yeah, they certainly. They, they would immediately, you know, or they'd run away in fear. But, yeah, they're very... This last, I would say, six months, anyway, where I am on my timelines, I was pretty specific on where I wanted to go timeline, line-wise, vibrationally, because I was just fed up uh, with where I had been over the last year and a half. So I was very specific about wanting to raise vibrations, and I did it pretty rapidly. So it was a little tough on my skin suit, on my human skin suit, because I moved so fast, but totally worth it now that I'm here. And those guys, the, the clan, they operate on a higher vibration than humans do. And they never, they never go into the classic low-end uh, uh, third-dimensional vibrations. They don't do that. So you'd never see them there. And that's where fear is, the vibration of fear. So if you've got a group that's going out into the wild in the vibration of fear, they would never be able to see them in in that state, they would never match enough to be able to see them. They'd be looking through them with the wrong filter. You know, it'd, it'd be like, um, oh, I don't know, trying to look through. Yeah, they're just in the wrong filter. You'd never, ever be able to see each other that way. So if you go and you, you go out and you look for them like you do loving all of nature in a very calm way, in a very accepting, easy, go with the flow, everything is perfect times way. They're much closer than they used to be. Very, very close. So I've got some out the back of Stephanie's house that have come up to probably, I'd say they were probably 100 feet away. Wow. They were that close. And you can hear their calls a lot more, which I've noticed the most is that I can hear them call because they they are um, spread out and they talk to each other using, like some of them use bird calls and some they sound like um, like coyotes or wolves, but it, it won't be, or, or all kinds of birds, like owls, they'll use owls. But to me, there's a very definite difference between what they're doing and the real call. So it's kind of like, you know, in Western movies and they've got Indians and the Indians will use um, sounds like uh, owls and stuff to talk back and forth to each other. That's kind of what the clan does too. They talk to each other that way too. And what exactly is the clan's purpose on Earth? Well, the the clan actually predates humans. Mm -hmm. So they've been on the planet. They would be what we would, what I would consider the original uh, bipedal humanoid being. They are the originals, the original beings. But when other alien groups came on the planet, <clears throat> it was taking their DNA, the clan's DNA, that original DNA, they took that DNA and jacked with it and created what we now have here for humans. So they actually are our old, 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 old original ancestors before when the, when the planet was originally created, so to speak, and seeded out, and it got down to the fact that there were humanoid-like beings, they were the first. And basically what happened is as these other alien cultures came and took the, the clan from all over the planet and kind of took them and added this DNA or that DNA and then put them back on the planet, creating everything that we've got now, there has always been the baseline groups of the clan that were never messed with, that they've always been here. And so they've never gone anywhere. And they were just, uh, they're, they're the same reason they're here. It's the same reason that somebody, an entity would come and play the role of a tree or a cat 
or it's just a, an experience to have while you're on the planet. So you mean to tell me that modern humanity was actually created from aliens coming down here and tinkering with DNA. Why would they do that? For what, for what well, reason? Ultimately, ultimately, all planets, all civilizations, all beings, really, in this particular game is done that way. It's done outside of the game, too. It's just a part of play. It's uh, now there. There are pretty two distinct ways that that was done on this particular planet, and that was very, 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 very long time ago, way longer than any human knows about. And there were basically two ways that it was done. One was aliens that <clears throat> that I would put those on the gecko side, the gecko group, and they were they were creating. Uh, a slave race. They were they were pr pr producing. Uh, they they like gold. They're big gold people. They like gold. They use gold out in the fourth dimension a lot to do trade with. So first they came down and they got the gold themselves, and then they didn't want to. So and it's hard. It's hard to come from a different planet or a different universe and alter your vibration so that you can stand on a completely foreign planet. You have to match the planet you're on. It's way more complicated than just having the right oxygen level so that you can breathe. It's way more complicated than that. So it took quite a bit to get them to come in and get the gold out. So they decided to um, create a basically a slave race of beings. And at first, the beings that they created were pretty simplistic. They were pretty, they didn't think much. They just were kind of to go do this and do this and they were very simple they didn't have much didn't have a whole lot of consciousness or they didn't think for themselves they just followed directions and then the beings that were doing that they got bored they didn't want to come and nobody wanted to come and oversee the people that were pulling out the gold these new humans that they'd created nobody wanted to do that so they kept making them genetically smarter and smarter and smarter until basically they got smart enough that they basically said, yeah, we're not doing this anymore. We don't believe in you anymore. Go away. And considering they are creator gods, they pretty much just genetically altered and created until they altered themselves right out of the picture. On the other hand, the groups that I would say are more pigeon-like, the pigeon groups, they came in and they started like seeding the planet with a humanoid type um, being that was more what they consider brothers and sisters. They consider um, that that they're a, that the humans are a part of them, and it's kind of like it's not a bad thing. It's like uh, Columbus coming over to the New World. It's exactly the same concept, only in the fourth dimension, it's done universally and it's done with planets. So. You didn't. They didn't come from England, and you flew, came over here, and then they lived exactly the way they did in England here. A lot of things had to change. They had to build with different products. They had to live with different food. They had to get used to different um, climates. Well, it's the same way that happened on this planet. It's just other beings came here, some exploring, some wanted resources, um, whatever, and over time, there's been many, many, many reasons why other aliens have come and, and added genetics to this, to this planet. Some of them just came and lived and just became a part of humanity, and their DNA was, was, uh, has been involved in it. There's so much different, what humans would think of as Alien DNA, there's so much alien DNA in a human being now, it's not even funny. That's primarily what we're, our DNA is made up of now. Yeah. And it's just, that's a part of creation. That's part of how it's done everywhere in this game. So there's probably not too many planets that have pure DNA, right? It's probably all a big hodgepodge. Yeah, no. There, would, there really wouldn't be a concept of what that is because all creatures... No matter if they're the first creature, it's still a combination of DNA from other places. 
So in order to create this or that, it's coming from somewhere else. So what would be the, there is no such thing as pure. There's just different ways of putting it together. Okay. And some, there are a lot of alien races out there that that's their thing. It's usually like here, there would be dog breeders that specialize in a certain breed of dog, that that's their thing. Or people that's, that um, grow weed, how they've gotten really, really good at genetically altering them to, to do really good things. Well, there, there are races that that's what they do. It's not a, it's not a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's just a thing. It's just a thing that they enjoy doing. And it's uh, some of them. Now, the geckos, they do it like they made slaves. That's not too cool. All the pigeons did it to expand and make more um, relatives, I guess. <laughs> and I'm sure there's a lot of scientists on Earth that are monkeying around with human DNA for whatever Oh, yeah. yeah. Lots. Lots. Trying, trying to make it, make it uh, so we don't get cancer, or, or who knows? You know, they, the Nazis tried to get, make a super race. Yep. In fact, I'll the, try to make things better and live longer and less disease and get rid of disease. People do it. I mean, we're doing it all the time. Well, out there in the rest of the universes, they do it too. Mm -hmm. Same thing. So, is that why gold is so rare? And um, Touted is it because they extracted so much gold from this planet? Well, it's actually not rare. There's a bunch of it here, but they don't want. <clears throat> it is the reason why they've made it appear that it's a rare gold. I mean, it's a rare thing because here it's really not good for much. It's a very soft metal. It's not even one of the shinier ones. It's really hard to make anything with. It wears out really, really easily. But out in the fourth dimension on the lower vibrations, gold is used. <clears throat> it's a it's a conduct conductivity type thing. I don't know how to explain it, but they use it out there in their worlds to to uh, gosh, I don't know how to explain. Anyway, they use it. So what they did is they kind of made it here. They didn't want the humans to want it. They so they kind of played up on this. Well. You don't really have very much of it. It's really hard to get to. You can't get it, so the people would kind of leave it alone. Because the impression now is you can't afford gold. It's hard to find. There's not much of it. In reality, there's a lot of it. There's still a lot of it on this planet. And they they do get it, but after, over, after a while, the ones that came here to get the gold, that was... Oh my gosh, that was thousands of million. Uh, that was a billion years ago. It was a long time ago. So they don't really use the gold anymore like they did when they were first doing that. So they, they use it in different ways now. So now they're really not as interested in the gold. So the gold is shifted back into humanity. But even humans are figuring out that, wait a minute, there's more of it than we thought. And, you know, there's a lot of the old, old families that have got hordes of it underground, and they do it to control the economy. Uh, so the more that that gets figured out, that, that it's, all, it's all basically nonsense. And if you pull yourself away from that game and say, wait a minute, uh, I don't agree. I don't agree that my money that I work for is going to be attached to this gold that we don't know anything about. We don't know where it is. There's no way of proving where it is. We have no idea how much it is. All you can do is go off of what people tell you. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't really trust people, and certainly not people who are in charge of running the wealth of the world. So I certainly would not base my wealth based on anything they have to say. Uh, but I do know that I've seen pictures of it, and I've talked to, i uh, telepathically talked to them and asked some questions about the whole gold thing. And I got enough information that I blew it off. And I went, oh, okay, so that's a part of an old game that I want nothing to do with. So, yeah, it's not a very practical thing. The interesting thing is the thing that's probably worth more from a human perspective is crystals. Because crystals are phenomenally, I mean, that's a big thing that you can really use a crystal. They're very powerful things that once humans get the hang of it, those are 
going to be what's worth a lot. Not gold. Gold just really doesn't. There's not a whole lot you can do with gold. <clears throat> you make shiny, pretty things, but they won't last. <laughs> well, a lot of people think that the dollar will soon collapse and world monetary systems will collapse and then we'll start going back to gold. <clears throat> and uh, I find it amazing, like you say, like I have in my hand, this is a poker chip. And uh, if this were a gold coin, you can't see it on camera, but you can see it. This is worth like fourteen hundred dollars, and I just find that out I'm outrageous, don't you? I mean, fourteen hundred dollars. Yes. <laughs> and that's totally arbitrary. That's totally somebody picked this metal mm -hmm. out of the blue and said, "Okay, this is going to be worth a lot of money." Yeah. Why? Why? It's. I don't know. I've had an eighteen karat gold ring. And it took about five years for it to be to it to wear away. It's very weak metal, mm -hmm. so it's just yeah. I, I'm like I'm going the arbitrary nature of things. It's just bizarre. But if you are gonna, I mean, okay, they can play that game and they can say there's not very much gold and we're gonna put it up here and that's what everything's gonna be based on. But to me, it's no more valid than saying everything is based on. Uh, whether roses are yellow or not. I mean, it's a purely arbitrary decision that people buy into. Uh, to me, I I think something should be worth what it's worth to you. Uh, that's why that's the reason why I like barter. I like barter a lot. Mm -hmm. I like barter where I've got something that you need or want, and you've got something I need or want that that I don't need it anymore, or I can do it, and we can change. So at the end of the day. When we both walk away, we're both happy. Because if we're dealing with money, even if I've got something that you want, if you pay me cash money, I don't know if you've noticed that, but even if you want it, even if I've given you a really good deal on it, and it's a really good deal, the moment I give it to you and you hand over money, there's this sadness behind that of letting go of that money and giving it up for something else. But if you barter for something, you don't have that feeling of, oh, was that the right thing? It's just a pure trade. It just vibrationally, it feels so much better than exchanging money for something. Because there's just this innate in the back of everybody's mind, this, I worked this hard to get this thing. Am I sure I want to give it up for this thing? There's, the, there's just this buyer's remorse, even whether it's a little bit or a lot. There's always that vibration behind it, and I don't, I can feel it. I don't like it. it. It doesn't feel good to me until I can figure out how to fix that. Um, I really prefer the whole, the whole exchanging, exchanging thing. And so far, exchanging thing is working. I know that people say, I know the new agers say, well, you know, you, you give me money for an exchange of knowledge or healing or whatever it is they're up to. But still, I can feel that underlying vibration. That's what bothers me. I don't, but I'm like really super, super sensitive. So I don't have any problem with anybody else getting money and exchanging it. it this, that's just for me personally. I know. Last but I do find it, I, I think it's bizarre, like you said. It's just like, who decided just out of the blue, okay, this is going to be the standard for some unknown reason instead? Why did they pick? It's like, um, Okay, you don't eat dolphins. Nobody would ever think about eating a dolphin, right? Dolph oh, no, no, no. But you go out and eat a tuna, and nobody thinks twice about it. Yeah. And in some part of the world, uh, you absolutely can't even think about eating a horse or a cat. But you can totally eat a pig and a cow. But it's in other parts of the world, oh, no, 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 you can't eat pigs. And a cat's perfectly fine. That's good meat. And then people will argue about this arbitrary distinction of what is okay and what is not okay. To me, watching that over the years, and especially when I can see it vibrationally now, it's just bizarre. And then people will get so angry at each other. And I'm going, uh, but you, you just arbitrarily chose something. You know, just out of the blue, you arbitrarily chose something and... And I'm supposed to abide by that, whether I like it or not, because somebody made a rule that I didn't get the memo on. And then everybody's sitting there following these rules that nobody knows where they came from. 
I mean, I know that in this country we have more dogs and cats as pets, but still, I, I mean, is that a good enough reason to go to another part of the world where they don't like dogs and cats and they're eating them and, and go to war with them? I mean, where's, again, we get back to that video where you like watch where, you know, you teach your kids to be, to be, um, to understand somebody else's point of view, to share, to be quiet, to be understanding. And then the adults don't do that. I mean, they just don't. I mean, just stop and look at it for a minute. They're not from here. Don't, don't judge somebody else. And that can be with somebody that's right next door to you because they could be raised completely different than you are. Completely different than you are. So, yeah, bizarre. That's a very good point that, you know, in India, you know, the Hindus, the cow was sacred. They would not think of eating a cow. Muslims would never think of eating a pig. And, exactly. And they will, you know, they're really stern about that. And we have no big deal. And they'll be a, if we, Vietnamese, they eat dogs or cats, I hear. And, you know, we judge them. It, it's weird, right? And it's just an animal. It's, it's, just, it's exactly. just, a, just a damn animal. So. And it's your, it's your right to, you know, eat them, don't eat them. Make yeah. them pets, make them holy. Yeah. But what people need to get is you can do whatever you want, but so can they. Leave them alone. Stop trying to get people to do it your way. Because there isn't one right way. Your experience is your experience, and it's valid, period. End of story. So your comments on gold and the monetary system is very eye-opening. Uh, last year, you were a fan, I believe, of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Isn't that kind of the same thing, though? Someone arbitrarily says this is valuable. But it takes it out of the, the realm of a handful of people running things. That's why I like it. It takes it away from the ones that have been controlling it for a very long time, who have controlled what everybody else gets to do, and it breaks that. So it takes it over into, oh, hundreds and hundreds of different routes. So instead of there just being one option, and you're in a country or on a planet, and this planet, because of a handful of people, have said, this is how you're going to trade, and this is what your trade is worth. You don't have anything to say about that. doesn't matter if you agree or disagree. You have no way to control it. Now, with Bitcoins, you can choose. You can say, no, I don't want to be a part of that. I don't agree with how you divide it up. I don't agree with what you say is worth something. And you can take it over, and you can choose. You can choose which way that you want to trade. And you can trade with people who agree with you. That's why I like Bitcoin. You think that's the way of the future for a lot of people? I I really do. I do. Mm -hmm. I do. I think it's just a matter of them making it um, easier because it's really complex now. Uh, I went with Tracy and she tried to explain it to me. And I'm pretty smart and I love math. But my gosh, I was like, okay, I'm totally lost. Because they do have so much... Um, there's so much security involved in the whole thing, so it doesn't get nabbed and taken away and stuff. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's I, I think it's not only the way, but I think it's inevitable. Mainly because the young people know how to do it. And mm -hmm. the older people, I don't know that they'll ever get into it. I think they'll die off without it being. But I think with the younger people coming to their own, eventually it's... Yeah, they, they don't really like the old way. So they will continue to do what it takes to get a new way done. They like their independence. They like, they're, they're not really good with country borders anymore because they were raised in the land of the internet where, you know, they've got friends all over the place. They don't think American and, and Indian and Chinese. They don't think like that. They just think they are a part of the world. So they want to interact and they don't like going through other people. They like, fast, instant, getting things done thanks to the internet. So if they can do their deal with somebody without having to go through changing the money over and talking to, and it, it's all personal, private. So they don't have to be interfered with by any country or any rule or regulation. They like that. So, and good for them. But don't, no you, power to them. don't you think though, if Bitcoin or some cryptocurrencies got more and more mainstream and popular that the powers that be, wouldn't they try to corrupt it, manipulate it, ban it, outlaw it? 
Oh, they, they already have mapped several of the big ones. They control them. But the key is to watch that the big coins can be created so rapidly. And if they, if and when people get down to these young people can do it and put together a, a big coin setup and they can do it very quickly, it is, it is historically been known that these guys that control things, they're slow. They're very slow in what they do. They won't be able to keep up with it. So if they try to take one over, it's no big deal. It's just like the Internet. It's like Facebook. Okay, Facebook, when it started, was one thing, and they've grown into being big, and YouTube the same way. But in the Internet world, if the Internet people don't like you anymore, somebody else will just go start another Facebook or start another um, YouTube, and if you're not careful, they'll be gone in a year because everything moves so fast. And most of the people that have been in charge of this planet for the last thousands of years, they don't move that fast. And so they can't keep up with keeping control over everything. That's why they tried so hard to get control of the Internet, because they knew that, that they couldn't control the world like they've been controlling it, it with the Internet out, with people being able to talk to each other. It's really hard to send people to go kill groups of other people if they can talk to the other people and go, we don't know why our country is doing this or that. They need to they need to be able for us not to be able to talk to each other. They need for us they they need to decide where the money goes and where the food goes and where the knowledge goes. And with the internet all of that's changed. And that's the same way with the flow of the of commerce, of trade. And what it's worth and what it's worth for you and me and, and you know, get the governments out of the way. Good luck on the governments too. I don't think governments are doing so well either. No, no, they're not. Very true what you say about the Internet. I mean, back in the 90s, America Online ruled the planet. Now they're irrelevant. MySpace 10 years ago was yep. was the shit. Now, you know, no one even knows MySpace. So, and Do you remember when we were younger? It took, for a company that big, that AOL was that big, and mm -hmm. MySpace was that big, it took a long time for them to go down and somebody else to replace them. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, yeah, you're always wondering, okay, who's next? I mean, Twitter came in and out like a storm. Mm -hmm. You know, Instagram, same thing. They went from nothing to boom. And that's how fast it can be. Yeah. Well, if, you, if you've got to stay on your toes, you can't piss people off. You don't, have them, you don't have them locked down anymore. So if they don't like the way you go, they'll either wait or somebody will just start a new one. And on the Internet, it doesn't take a lot of money anymore to start this stuff. Yeah. yeah, I was watching this show, a new one on Hulu, uh, Songland, where they come in and they've got songwriters that come in and they pick a song, and these these big names will come in. It was the guy from Will I Am was the first one. I think he put the show together, and then he picks one. They go through these. There's contestants, and he picks the one that he liked, and by the time they picked it, and then they had the, the show, and it said. This song will be available tonight. So now, because of the technology, they can find a song, you can produce a song, and you can get it out on the internet in a day. Yeah. In a, in a day. Well, you know, you our, know, that could take what? How long did that take? It took a lot longer. Our, our good friend Jeremy, you know, he can record a song in the studio. That probably takes the most time. Mix it and what have you, and then that night put it on Amazon or iTunes or whatever, right. and Make a video on and YouTube, and there you go. That, you know, that's another way that they're losing control. Okay, they can't control, they can't control the news. Why? Because anybody can afford a drone and a camera. You can upload it to the internet all around the world, and you can do it instantly. Yeah. Well, now everything that they used to have control over of what's happening here and what is going on, it all filtered through those guys that were ruling the world. Now they're not. So they can't control who's going to be, who's going to write the music, what kind of music is being played, what's the message in the music, yeah. what what kind of, shoot, TV shows can be done. You know, you can have your own show. That's what the internet, YouTube, all over the place. So a lot of that taking the control away from the handful of people and putting it back in the hands of everybody, that's what the internet's for. And that's what 
it's in that way you get back to that God status of understanding how powerful you are. Mm -hmm. That's why the internet was done so that you could, you could interact with people anywhere you want, that you could do it fast, that you could see how, how good you really are and that we could take it away from believing these people that have told you, Oh, well, you are only smart enough to do these three jobs. That's all you will ever do. And you're not worth anything more. Now people come out and go, wait a minute. If I want to have a successful um, song, all I've got to do is put it on YouTube and keep sending it. They will decide whether they like my song or not. And that's what happens. We well, don't have to rely on somebody putting it on the radio. These guys can go out and do, you want a book? You don't have to go through a publisher anymore. You can publish it yourself, put it out there, let the people decide. And well, that's the same way as the Bitcoin. Everything's coming away from those central people that have been controlling things where people can put them together themselves. You do it yourself now. Well, Naya, you are also a good example of that. Here you were just a few years ago kind of a bored, maybe a lone woman, and you're like, man, you know, it just sucks. And then you just connected with the world on YouTube. Now you've got a fan base and followers all over the world. And you'll, you'll, you'll post a video and right. hundreds and thousands of people will watch it. I mean. I know. know it's crazy. I mean, yeah. It's really crazy. And you're just some, just some woman in Texas, you know, making videos. Yeah. Just some woman in a trailer in Texas. Yeah. Pretty wild. Pretty but, wild. But, yeah, that's exactly the way it is yeah you're right about too that the powers that be used to be they had the control the, of the news and everything and um, you know this last election the media CNN all these they tried to just bullshit us that Hillary was way in charge the leader and and then when Trump did win they're supposed they, they want to make it like oh it was a shocking upset victory but I remember you know months before the election I would go on YouTube, I would see a Trump rally, and it was packed. And I would turn on a, a, to see a Hillary rally, and there wasn't very many people there. So even, you know, reality was not being presented in a truthful way. Right. And that's the, and they're in trouble because they try that. They try to say, well, this is the way it is, but there's somebody at the real place with a real camera yeah. putting it up going, no, this is the real thing. They're lying. And the more that happens, I mean, the older people, they... There's a lot of older people that are just going with it anyway, but most of the younger people are going, uh, 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 no, we're not buying it. So, and you don't have to, if you want to know what, ha what is happening over anywhere on the planet, all you got to do is go online and ask. You can talk to somebody. Very true. So you said earlier that crystals are a very valuable resource personally and, and probably for barter. Is there anything else that you could think of or would recommend that people would store as a possible barter? You, are you a fan of platinum or silver or anything else? Um, well, it, if you were talking about, if you were on the timelines where everything kind of crashed and burned and it was kind of uncomfortable because you couldn't exchange money the way that you have been used to doing so. So how do you get around that? Um, I think it is a, for, for those scenarios, in my opinion, from what I can see on those timelines, it is not practical to assume that any of those will be worth anything because it's just pieces of metal. If you're in that kind of scenario, you want the stuff, you need the things. So if you were going to do anything, I would lean very heavily into be self-sufficient, you know, have a solar power, um, have a lot of batteries, um, grow your own garden, put up your own food, have some way of, of, uh, of taking care of yourself. So you don't need the money at all, because even if you have money, if everything crashes and burns and the governments are a mess, well, it, you know, I was in Houston when we had a couple pretty bad hurricanes and everything shut down and it was two days and everything that was off the shelves in every grocery store. It took four days for there to be no gas at all. None. Well, I don't care. There were a lot of rich people in Houston. It doesn't matter how much gold you've got. If there's no way of getting to the product to exchange, take your gold and exchange it, it's worthless. 
it might as well be toilet paper. It's totally worthless. You, you don't need piles of gold. You don't need piles of platinum. You need what that stuff buys. So in my opinion, it's a lot smarter to get it so that if it were to happen, you've already got the stuff that you need. You know, have a, a well. Don't, don't get city water. Have your own well. Or collect water from some water collection system. Any of the stuff that you need in order to survive, make sure that you've already got it. You need a place to live. I'm pretty sure that if you've got a mortgage, if everything crashes and burns, uh, banks are going to be coming and foreclosing on you. So I wouldn't worry about paying that one. So you need your place to live. You need stuff to eat. You need water to drink. And you're going to want your um, your electricity. So I would make sure you had those things covered. And then sit back and and uh, personally, I think it's a good idea to stay out, to have some place that you can go, whether it's in a group or your own land that you, if something like that were to happen, get out of the city as quickly as possible. You do not want to be there. It was just a few weeks with a storm and the people were very not happy. It is true. It's, you do not want to be in a city during one of those events. So you need to be, have some place that you can go that's already ready. Don't worry about hoarding the the finances because, <laughs> for one thing, if, if that were to happen, how are you going to pay for anything? You're not going to walk in with a platinum coin or even a gold coin and say, here, I'd like to buy a loaf of bread. Uh, you, you, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. So, you know, you're not going to go out if there's that kind of catastrophe. You're not going to go out and buy a house during that period of time. You're going to be surviving with your basic needs. So make sure you've got your basic needs. Don't worry about the rest of it. They could jack with all of them right now. They could jack with silver and platinum and gold. They could do whatever they want. They control the market on it. So why would you why would you want to go from, the, whether it's a dollar bill or gold or platinum or silver, they still control how all of that is traded. So what difference does it make whether you have one or the other? You have a digital dollar or you have a, an ounce of gold, it's still the same people controlling how it's traded. That's a very good point. So actually, you're taking your own advice right there in that bus, stocked up with canned food, water. You're pretty much off the grid. You can go anywhere. If, if you're in a bad situation, you can haul out of there. And, yep. and I, I do one step further than that because I don't have much food here on me. Mm -hmm. Mostly, I can forage. So I can go out and walk, I don't care, a, a park I'm driving through, somebody's lawn, I can walk down the driveway just like I did at your house. I can forage anywhere and I don't take much food. So I, I'm not even worried about collecting too much um, food as long as I've got a way to uh, get water, which I always do because I don't like to go places where they don't have water. And I've got about, oh, I don't know, about 50 lighters to make sure that I can always make fire. Other than that, I'm, I'm pretty much good.